in this episode. I, you, just like if you're, you're in the bar, you singled her out because yeah. you thought she was attractive. If she's turned around and she just sounded like an idiot or, you know. Like voice modulation syndrome or something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that real? What is that? Voice modulation syndrome? <laughs> that sounds made up. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Tell me that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, you're listening to Paleo Cheese Podcast, episode 31, part one, opposing views on Tinder. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Jeremiah Bannister. And I am Chad Lutsky. And you are listening to Paleo Cheese Podcast right here as part of the Project Entertainment Network. And Chad, we have a really cool show again. We, we've done this recently, uh, not too long ago, where we watched a film and it was a, it was a, a blast. And we're actually a little bit bummed out, man, because it was hilarious. And there were some hilarious clips at the end. Hilarious and need, clips. Hilarious. I don't know. I mean... On, to, just to be honest, and I know maybe I'm biased, but the idea is we should have gone viral with that, Chad. I mean, that Birdemic, a review of Birdemic is viral material. Maybe if we, I, and I agree. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, but maybe, uh, you know, it's like the birds at the end of the movie. They're just there and they're not getting any bigger. And they're just <laughs> sitting there, <laughs> flapping their wings. <laughs> and they're not getting any, and they're not getting bigger, they're not getting smaller. <laughs> yeah, they're just they're just ecstatic, dude. It's just yeah. just movement. That's all it is. It's just movement. Yeah. And uh, but people gotta you got people gotta go check it out, man. But today, you you picked out a movie, and all I remember you saying well, well, quite a while ago was that it's really terrible, which that gets me excited, right? Mm -hmm. I get pumped up to watch terrible movies with you. It, it's not, no. but it's not as bad as like there's stuff to laugh at. Um, but it's not as bad as Birdemic. It's not like that at all. I mean, it, this is like hereditary compared to that, you know. Um, <laughs> it's it's top-notch like Oscar material compared what about, to that. What about Were Rooster? No, it's better than that. Yeah, it's just not a... It's a slow movie. It's for the people who love that nostalgic like 80s... Um, it's one of those movies where it's like if you ask a horror fan that likes the movie, is this a good movie? They're gonna say, um, no, but I love it. You know, like Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. Sure. Yeah. It's not you know. I don't know if it's quite that bad. But. <laughs> yeah. Dude, but that's a good movie, dude. I'll watch it again. I actually tried looking it up recently. I was just talking about that today because Jack right. Campisi, a paleo cheese favorite. Yeah. He uh he was talking about how he was watching the uh, I think he said the European version which has more Kiss songs including solo stuff from the solo album. Really? And um yeah, I've never seen that that I one. didn't even know they had like a European version of that. Yeah. You know, it makes know. sense, dude. The Europeans, there's some weird stuff, dude, like, you know, a lot of these bands, you know, you think they go away or something like that and they don't. Uh -huh. They're just really popular in Europe. Yeah, like or, or like the off. David Asshoff, dude, I found out the Black Eyed Peas, I, I just thought that they all vanished. I was, you know, actually kind of grateful for it. But the thing is, apparently they're playing down in Mexico. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Apparently they're really huge down there. I go figure, dude. I had no clue. I don't know. I've never, I don't think I've heard of a single one of their songs. My lumps, dude, you've never heard of Lovely Lady Humps or whatever? Maybe is it rap or what is it? No, dude, it's its own style. I don't even know. It's just Black Eyed Peas. It's like yeah. one of those bands where is it the one with Fergie in it? Yeah, it's the one with Fergie. Hot in chick. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But see, she's a good but see, singer. She's she's oh. pleasant to look at. Okay, that's that's the redeeming quality because, dude, that Super Bowl song that she did that was maybe one one of the most painful yeah. songs I've ever. Oh yeah, dude. I've i It's another level, and and Super Bowl is kind of known for like that sort of thing a lot of bad singing going on over there but dude, dude i think every super terrible. bowl show has sucked since prince it's like yeah, yeah the yeah, bar was good. set so high with prince yeah, it, yeah. It, it can never you can't beat that ever yeah you can't beat it you, you know 
Not even with the lady humps, dude. And look, I mean, that song, it'll, it'll get you. It's a good one. <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> that, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, but this movie, so this movie is an unforgettable thing, right? Yeah. And yeah, we, yeah. we haven't watched it yet. So, yeah. This and probably, I don't know yeah. Jack about it. This will probably be a part one. I do have a topic if you're up for it. If Well, dude, I'm always up for a topic. Okay. Well, so yeah. this would be a part one. So everybody can see that Jeremiah has no idea, but everybody who's listening to this, that they know about sleepaway camp and they are dying to see your reaction. Trust me. And they will be back for part two. And on the video at the end, we will have a reaction just like we did in birdemic. Yeah. The clip at the end of birdemic, because there was so much to laugh at, uh, the clip is the long, it's like a bonus part in the YouTube one, not in the, not in, not in the podcast part. And you know, the audio, just audio, because that would, but it's like eight minutes long or something of just us cracking up at Birdemic and, and me saying, "Wow, yeah, a lot, dude, that was hilarious." <laughs> well, there are certain movies, man, where you watch it and you're dumbfounded, you know, and it's it's one of those things like, "Wow, like really?" <laughs> and there, there's not many words, dude, in that place where you're that dumbfounded to just come out right involuntarily mm-hmm. and wow was it for me that day i it was funny because my our, my kids watched that and they watched the end and they they were like papa you said wow a lot <laughs> I'm like yeah I'm like you guys saw birdemic and they're like yeah that's true <laughs> I said, well, yes obviously i said wow yeah it could be a, it could be an uh, its own drinking game within the the yeah. car driving drinking game yeah yeah just yeah. hearing yeah. you say wow you'll be a meme right next to owen wilson and yeah. say wow at the top yeah. wow <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> so all right man well then with no further ado dude we got to watch this movie man no topic do you want to talk about the topic first we can that we makes more well. sense yeah, yeah we yeah, may as yeah, well yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah we got yeah why why would we <laughs> who whose idea was it to do it otherwise jed i don't know i tried <laughs> to get a special guest tonight last minute and Did you? i was denied shot down yeah who my, was my it? own my my own son, dude Elijah? Yeah, really. Yeah, but he said he didn't have a, a camera, oh, um, yeah, yeah. and he said he was just was gonna veg out and play uh, Daisy. This video game he's been playing. What? Are you serious? So yeah, and because I thought the topic that I had was very applicable for for him and what he's going through right now. So that's unbelievable, man. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have words, dude. I'm gonna have to have but, words with this guy because I'm like, dude, he's invited onto the show, and he's like, nah, I think I'm just gonna just chill he's, out he's and play some video you. games, man. Well, the first words we need to have what? for him is that he works third shift, yeah, listens to music all day at his job, but won't listen to our podcast. Intervention, bro. Yeah, we need to do intervention and say, what yeah. are you doing? Why aren't you watching our show? It only makes sense that he would. Cause it's hilarious. It's awesome, dude. I don't even, you know. Yeah, he's listened to a little bit. I think he. It's like my books. A lot of people are like, "Oh, I don't like horror," not realizing it's not really yeah, horror. Not, yeah. Yeah. And then they crack one open. They're like, "Oh, okay." It's like with him. It's like, well, I don't really like. I don't know what he's thinking. You know, I don't really. You know, if it's a movie that you I don't know about or something, I was like, "That's not. We're not really. We don't just talk about movies." It's true. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. So we talk about a whole bunch of stuff, dude. I yeah. don't yeah, it makes it makes no sense, dude. It's 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 not right. And plus, I'm kind of like, you know, Uncle Jeremiah. Not really, but I feel like I am. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, dude, how old was he, man? When I was like when I when I met him, I was like 20, what, 20 years old, 21 years old? Pretty much. Cause he puked no, on me, bro. No, you were younger than that. 18 at the at the youngest. I was 26. You were 18. Yeah, I was 18. Okay. So I was, I was 18. Okay. So I was 18 years old, man. Almost 19. Because what are you yeah. right now? 42? Yep, 42. Okay. So so I've got... And when's your birthday? What month? March, March 27th. Oh, okay. So I don't have... Because I just I just went up a, another year um, yeah, last dude. week. So Did you get that magazine? magazine? AARP? Oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? In the mail, yeah. Jet. Yeah. <laughs> they're calling for you buddy they're calling for you okay so the topic the topic yeah yeah um and you know this this might be a five minute discussion this might be a 20 minute discussion okay what are your thoughts on 
like you and I are both married. We have families. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a ton of kids. Mm -hmm. I've got three kids. I've been with my wife for 30 years. You've been with your wife for... Yeah, dude. Uh, uh, 12, 19. 19? 19 years. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've been married since 2002. Okay. Yeah. So when I met my wife, it was 1991. And, uh, you know, we got married like three years later. I've never had to utilize um, like a dating app. Yeah, no. And I, I see people using them, particularly my son, Elijah, who, who I was hoping would be on the show tonight. Elijah's, um, you know, he's 24. And he just got out of a two-year relationship. So we're both married men. And, mm -hmm. and we've never, we didn't have this around, or I, at least I didn't. There was no internet. I don't know if you were, when you were dating, if there was some kind of Tinder or something. At the yeah, time. there was Christian chat. <laughs> which was dumb dude yeah. i dated a girl through that I, I moved out to minnesota that lasted like two weeks dude and i was like on my own yeah. and i learned really really quickly that uh internet dating like that no way man well my topic of, of conversation i guess was like what, what are your feelings on that how do you let's hypothetically say that maybe we aren't as young as we are or or, or for whatever reason we are on the market you know, yeah. that yeah. we've had divorces or, or whatever, yeah. or, or just never got married in the first place. Um, and here we are, you know, in our 30s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're both in our 30s, dude. Yeah, yeah, we're good. And, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're looking for some, we're looking to court. We're looking to meet some some ladies some and ladies. Uh, yeah, not not good. to hook up, but to, you know, settle down. So, I mean... Can you eat, can you picture yourself? What do you what do you think of these? Would you can you picture yourself using uh, like an app like Tinder or whatever no. else? No, 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 no. In part because in part because we we're fortunate in two ways, and people can say you guys are old and say it's okay. It's actually we're what we're going to say is pretty smart here. Number one, we know what it's like to have to meet somebody in real life, mm -hmm. and that is a different thing. That's not the same thing. In fact. Even the whole idea of meeting somebody on a dating app is ultimately because you want to be with them in real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your your gateway to real life is fake. Yeah. If you if you go this route, it is fake. She I understand called, that, but I'm not talking about that. looking at a picture of a girl and then getting married before you meet. No, no, but I'm but what I'm saying is that the entire the entire enterprise is phony from the start. If you go and you you meet somebody like you, you, did you meet Mary in a bar? Yeah, yeah. I met my wife in a bar too. Mm -hmm. When I when I walked in, I'm in my navy blues. I got my white cap, you know, all kind of cocked a little bit, maybe like I shouldn't, but it looked dope. And I go walking in, and I see this, you know, mega hot half Korean chick dude bent over a pool table. I had there was no filter with that. There was no there was no like you know smoothening of the skin. There was no telling me. What she's about, it, I mean, she could still in our first encounter, she could still talk to me in a way that is, you know, saying this is who I am and it might take me a little while to figure it out. But even then, my primary means of figuring it out is actually being around her physically. And yet if people go about it and they're like, well, I'm going to find somebody by by throwing myself into this massive pool of a bunch of profile pictures and information, I'm like, dude, you're setting yourself up in a lot of bad ways. And I think the reason why so many people nowadays even do that is because they have severed themselves from being involved in groups and in institutions and having small group gatherings on the regular in their homes. And this, forget COVID for a second. It's way before that. To do like when I met you, that was a small group. It was a Bible study. And I went to a, a concert in your basement, in your home, right? A lot of the stuff now, they'd be like, well, let's just get on Skype and talk. And again, you're you're right there back in the little frame again. You're a visual, a digital representation with a glowing screen at you. You're not seeing somebody walk around and being around them and everything else. And it's it is it's dramatically different. And I've had, you know, I've had decent experiences where I met somebody and I would have stayed with them. In fact, I was engaged to a, a girl that we were gonna get married and and I went to the Navy and she Long story short, she also went in and there was no way we could be together 
because I was I was in submarines. And so there's not many chicks. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> not many chicks on a sub base. Right. And so it didn't work out. But I also have one. And I hate even saying it, but it's it's valuable to say there's a I dated this girl and we would talk right on Christian chat or on any of these chat rooms right back then. And we would talk and everything and have these really long conversations. And we really got along really well and everything. And we then we we gravitated toward the phone, you know, so we started talking over the phone and she wasn't in the same state as I was and halfway across the country, in fact. And she talked about herself in a certain way. Well, eventually I wanted to see pictures of her because this is before there was even a bunch of pictures and stuff. So she ended up sending me pictures and it was very disheartening because I felt that it was not honest. And this is a decent, this is a person who's a nice person. I care about this person. Um, but there's just no way. I mean, there was just no, we, I'm, <laughs> she wasn't your type. You're not my type. That's yes. She was not my type. Okay. And mm -hmm. nothing rude about her as a person or anything like that. There was just no way. And it was, it was sad, dude, but it was one of those things where that just would have never happened in real life. If I walked into a, a room and I'm having a good conversation okay. and we're talking, I'd have all those cues. All right. You're, what about I, you? I, I, okay. I, I, I understand your experience. Yeah. However, I disagree on many levels because I think you're reading too much into it. Here's, here's me. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's, here's me. Okay. I got my Tinder app. Okay. Yeah. I'm on here. Okay. And I'm looking for, hot chicks okay in a certain uh -huh. age range i mean let's face yeah. it i'm I'm a dude um uh, you know i want someone that's pleasant to look at that i personally you know um just like art is subjective i think mm. beauty is 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 the same mm, so no. I'm, I'm looking through <laughs> well, <laughs> no okay. there are some no. that it's like okay everyone no. <laughs> that person's hot but no <laughs> okay yeah um I mean, we, we all know people that they, they get married, someone and they're just like, you know, or even their baby. Look at my new baby. Isn't she so precious? And you're like, uh, mm -hmm. actually, no, not yeah. at all. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, you know, objectively, what I'm it's true that that baby is yeah. fugly, but the person's blinded by love and you have to be charitable. Right. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, okay, okay. So I yeah, got yeah, my yeah. Tinder app, yeah, yeah. you know, and I'm going through it. And I, I don't know how these work. I, I, I would assume that you have certain criteria, like things that, that you can punch in, like yeah. maybe you have a profile that you fill out, like you're in the, into this kind of music, this kind of movies, or, you know, this, you know, these kinds of foods. And this is what you, you know, the long walk on the beach kind of stuff written down on there. And so, that's kind of like second place for that because my wife and I, when we met, we had nothing in common, mm -hmm. you know, um, she listened to actually country music at the time. She was like at the tail end of enjoying country music. She didn't know even a lot of the more popular, like she barely knew about Metallica and, and, uh, this is 91 Metall Metallica was really popular. Not quite like they are now, but they were still like, Come on, you know, you had to... Yeah, right. I mean, she was familiar because one of her best friends was was uh, in love with Lars Ulrich. But but the uh, we, ha we had nothing in common, you know, yeah. and 30 years later, um, and, and I mean like, uh, like movies, she's not into horror, she's not into punk rock, thrash metal, or any of the kind of, you know, music that I'm into. Um, e even as I got older, you're not so much into jazz or anything like that. So... You know, it's always, she's been her person, I've been my person, and then we have certain things that we do enjoy, that we've grown to love together or whatever. But at the time, nothing. Yeah. So, um, so that, that having things in common to me isn't necessarily that important based mm -hmm. on my experience because it has worked so well, even though we don't. So I'm on my Tinder app and I'm swiping whatever to these pictures. And I see a chick and I look at her profile and I don't know how many pictures you're allowed on Tinder. I don't know if it's one or two. I don't know jack about. Yeah, I don't Tinder. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but let's say if she's got, it's like, let's say it's like a mini Facebook profile. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm speaking, when I say Tinder, I'm speaking like 
I, uh, generally for so you didn't these, like do your homework before this these, you didn't like go and like no, download the app that. no I don't <laughs> you didn't do download no. it no. <laughs> mary comes in she's like what <laughs> what are you doing on tinder no so <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking like generally for yeah, 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 you yeah. know so when i t- say tinder i just mean a dating app in of general. course yeah, yeah um so let's say there's a handful of pictures and let's say i clearly noticed that every one of these pictures is filtered because you can tell a filtered picture. Yeah. You know, there are no blemishes. You, you can just tell. And so, guess what? I'm not going to dig further with this. Because as what Scott Webb would call, uh, he calls them glaciers. Uh, Gold <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to say Butterface, dude. And I was like, but that would make sense in glaciers. Ding. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, you, you don't know what's yeah. un- underneath yeah, you don't know. Yeah, over, over the water, you see just this little, little thing poking out. <laughs> then, uh, underneath that, yeah. the sea level is something entirely different. So yeah, um, so I'm not I'm not interested in, in the person that feels the need to uh, filter everything that they do. Okay, so yeah. there eliminates your first problem with it already. I'm not even going to waste my time yeah. with the whole because that was your first problem was the filter. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I would do. You can ask my 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 kids, my wife. I like read so much into something, and that like whether my son brings a, a girl over or we're meeting somebody the, for the first time or something. I get a really good. I'm I'm really good at like discernment. Yeah, and um, I've got a really good radar for you know mm, uh, certain, some, things, some certain things. Certain things. <laughs> certain things. It's the yeah. asterisk right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some some things. Radar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah, I not to say that that if if a chick's a serial killer, like I'm just going to notice it right away. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that <laughs> when I look at something, I can spot certain things that yeah. like let's say she's um she's got dreads and she's wearing a grateful dead shirt okay yeah first my first thought is she's a pothead i'm not interested okay that might not be true i had dreads for six years i I hate the grateful dead but if you look at me through the last you know three decades i haven't been a partying person but if you look at me you might think that i am so so there are outliers but your average dreadlocked chick with grateful dead swag on is going to be smoking it up. And See, I'm here, not interested in that, so I'm skipping it. Yeah, but here's the thing. It seems to be a common thing that in the past, a lot of times, the idea of opposites attract, right? Mm-hmm. It's common enough, it's proverbial. But when people go on where it's the information is just there, then their gateway is different. And and what they what they expect when they look, like to be quite frank, if if you went the route, if you if you were somehow able to get in a time machine, a TARDIS and go back to, you know, 91 or whatever, and you go back there and you had all of this equipment and technology at your disposal, the likelihood that you would have found Mary and been like, I'm going to marry her is practically zero mm-hmm. because she was not like you. And yet when and when you when people go how many people will go, well, opposites attract. I'm going to look for some people on here that are way different than me. Like they don't, because, it, because they're looking for all that information right up, right at the gate. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel like that sets people up for a false idea as to what tends to make people click. And people think, well, we both like the same music or we both do this. Therefore, and I say that, that's a big if before the therefore. And traditionally speaking, it has not been that way. The, you know, just through practice. I'm not saying like, you know, some co- maybe it's a cosmic principle. I don't know. But I'm saying that it just seems that it's been true for so many people. But you're talking as though, like, you just spilled a bunch of stuff now and earlier about the reasons why you wouldn't want to use it and things mm-hmm. to look out for and stuff. So why wouldn't you just put that in your, you know, like like I just said. Like I had certain things like I don't I don't want if she looks like this, chances are she might be getting high. I'm I'm over that. I don't want to you know do that. Um, the filter thing is is a red flag, and then I've got other things. So if you're using the Tinder app, why can't you just use your criteria and your knowledge of what you know to watch out for and pay attention to your personal red flags, and then just use it? Because you're you're acting as yeah. though. 
when you open up the app, all of that that you uh, that you understand and that you're afraid of is going to go away, and you're not and, and you're subject to Tinder how it works without having some kind of understanding from life experience that you can put into finding a mate. Yeah. On, on, well, on in app. in part, in part because I actually believe that's true, because uh, the, the without I'm not going to get all scholarly and crap, but I will say this. There's a phrase called the medium is the message. It's a very important one. And it basically says that the way that people work is that we we have a medium, like let's say a light, for example. It has no content. There's no story in a light coming at me. It's not like I'm watching the news. Um, but yet that medium by itself, just the existence of that light by itself, has an effect on my the way I think, the way my behaviors are, my sleep patterns, my work habits, almost everything. And we can see that by how it spread into and made it available for us to stay up all night now and mm. and and stay awake and not sleep anymore, which causes all sorts of issues. And and that it once we realize how dramatic of an impact it has on society as a whole, by the time we realize it. It will have been so big of a change and so so direct of an impact on us that it's practically irreversible. In fact, historically, it just is. You once and people will complain. Oh my gosh, you know, like take take uh, social media. People go, man, look at how the world's changed like crazy, and they freak out about it. And they say, man, everybody's mad all the time, and I'm I'm always on my phone, and I'm always doing this, and I'm always doing that. And look at how so many things have changed so fast, and they wish they get nostalgic. And they start saying, man, I wish, you know, it, it went back to this way and all that. And the thing is, by the time they finally figured that out, the impact of it was so dramatic all around them that it had affected almost every sphere of life. That's true of lights. That's true of social media. It's true of Tinder, anything like that. And that people, they, they don't even realize to what extent the very medium itself with it, with, with its own set of expectations. Like these are the markers that we want you to say so that somebody can get to know you and have a, a first impression of who you are. But that, that's not necessarily how first impressions work in real life. As I said, a first impression for you with your wife, I don't know what your first impression was like, what, where, where you first saw her, that input that is there that cues you. And I'm, I don't even believe it's a completely naturalistic thing. I think that, that I believe in soulmates and stuff like that, right? I believe that I wasn't in, I yeah. wasn't interested in my wife when we first met. So I, you know, if yeah. we would have had some kind of, um, I mean, it almost didn't happen. You know, I mean, I saw her; it was clear that she was into me, and so we kind of flirted and stuff. But you know, me, I'm just like anybody knows me, especially back then. Unless I've been drinking, and by that time I had quit drinking. Unless I've been drinking, I've always been like that guy that's like, um, even if this chick is like. It, it, it's obvious. All I have to do is go up and start making out with her and she's not going to push me away. It, even if it's yeah. that obvious, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do it. And yeah. because I'm that shy. So I would always, they would always have to come to me. And, and unless I've been, unless I've been yeah. drunk, yeah. then, then I would have, or not drunk, but you know, have that liquid courage. But, um, that's kind of how it happened. And, um, you know, Mary came up to me first and then we hung out all night with my other friend and her friend and then, you know, I got her number and I just wasn't interested in calling. I, 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 I was, I had just quit drinking. She was drinking. I was like, do I really want to deal with, you know, cause I'm a recovering alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So it's like, do I really want to deal with this kind of baggage that I, I've had to work on for myself? And no, I don't. So I just never called. And then she tracked me down like two weeks later and so we hung out and it slowly, it was very slow, but it just wasn't. Plus I was still uh, kind of in love with this other chick that we, uh, that I had spent nearly a year with and that, that we weren't going out anymore. And so it was a slow process. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah <laughs> dude nobody knows why we giggle every time we say process we're gonna so, have to one one of these days dude we're gonna have to we just some, should keep it you know kind yeah, of uh, just secret it's it's ominous it's a, yeah. yeah ominous but dude okay so you say you almost didn't mm -hmm. tension is that in the world of tinder 
she wouldn't have even been almost. No, I'm saying even, we would have gotten even to know gotten each there. other. We would have gotten to know each other maybe more first. But what? Well, but what I'm saying is, you if if you saw the stuff she liked, like I'll I'll take my wife as an example. So I'm not directing anything to you, right? Mm-hmm. My wife. Um, if I would have, if she was just a one of many, 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 so not, not one out of six chicks in a bar, right. Mm -hmm. But she's one in literally millions of people that I can just scroll through one after the other, after the other. Yeah. And I go in there and I look and I see her profile and it's got those things lined up that she likes the music she's into the TV show she's into and everything else. I probably wouldn't have married her. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would have just skipped right past. I would have just for me, like, that's oh. not, like I said earlier, that doesn't matter to me. But I don't care. But it if does if that if it does if you're going into a place where that's the very reason you're going in there is to see the profile. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, Mary wasn't wearing a my wife wasn't wearing a profile on her shirt that said, I like this music, I like these TV shows. I got to know her. The inputs that I got from her were different. And I actually had to get to that place where I saw those other things and said, well, I could say, well, I'm, I don't want to really marry you. You're into K-pop. <laughs> like I could have, I, I guess I could have done that, but uh, you know, by the time that happened, I'd already been hooked. Right. And it was, uh, I mean, I know in my mind, I know there's 7 billion people on the planet. I know half of them are more Not in your town chick. that you're No, but for. I'm saying, I'm using that to say, I know that the number is very large and there's many fish in the sea. Right. Mm-hmm. But yet, but yet I didn't take the, that wasn't factoring in the same way as it would be if I was looking at a screen and she was one of let's even whittle it down to 1000 profiles in your area. 1000. You say, OK, well, I'm going through one by one by one by one. My inputs, what I'm looking for or expecting when I'm thinking like, where do I want to go with this person? Do I want to engage when I when I saw her at the bar? We, I go and I play pool. The input of seeing her play pool was one thing that, that I really liked. And it was, I didn't see on there that she liked K-pop or <laughs> that she was into, you know, certain movies and TV shows that I'm like, no, nah, I'll pass on that. You know, um, I didn't even have those on the horizon at all. Whereas if I went on to a dating site, I might see, oh, I can see that she likes pool. And I can also see all those other factors. But that's if the type of if that's if the you're the type of person who looks for that. I'm not. What are you looking for on tin, on Dude, the dating app? Like, then what are you have, looking for on the dating app? Then right? no. When when I yeah. had like was going to punk shows and was in a punk band and had mm-hmm. half my head shaved and stuff, I was going out with like cheerleader chicks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. not for my school because. That that usually doesn't happen. Right. You got to go outside. Yeah, your, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. those those kind of chicks wouldn't wouldn't yeah. give me the time of day until actually years later. But no, uh, so I'm not. I was never like I was never even really that attracted to girls who were into the same stuff I was. It was just like if they were pretty and they were nice, then I was into it. I don't care what you you know that you have a horrible taste in music, and and I don't. That doesn't, but on the dating app, you small, can't. You're you're skeptical of one of those and completely unable to determine the other. If a chick, let's say, if a chick says no. she's into, um, I can't even say rap, but uh, a music that I'm just not into, you know, polka. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If she's yeah. into polka and she plays the tuba, so she's smoking <laughs> hot. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm down. I don't, I, I don't yeah. you know, I don't, as long as I don't have to listen to the tuba like all the time. But yeah, dude, I, I just, I'm not, what I don't care about uh, like commonalities like that. I just don't. But that's, that's what I'm saying is that that would make sense in the world that you're from. And it makes sense that you say that. And in fact, that I would say that because both of us are from the world that says when we go into a place like this, we don't have any of that information right at our fingertips. We have to actually make that move to even begin a conversation to kind of get in that vulnerable place where you're macking and stuff like that. Where, whereas in the, the new world of this, it's, it's literally part of your profile. It's right there. Just like, just like any other social media platform where that information is just stacked up for you. And so, and you wouldn't be able to tell if the person's nice. And even if you thought they were hot, you would still not know necessarily, are they, you know, do they have a gimp leg, for example, right? 
Are they? <laughs> oh, they're not worthy of loving. <laughs> Looks, look, everybody, everybody needs some love, right? But I, I've only got so much love to give, Chad, and I can only marry one person. And you know, I'm sure the Gimp will have a husband or a wife. Wow, <laughs> dude, it's, I'm editing it out. It's done, dude. It's out. But you wouldn't know. You would not know if 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 a person is being, as I said, I've experienced that personally. I've experienced it personally that, you know, and you'd have to get to the place. Hey, I want to see your whole body. Well, at that point, you're we're already admitting what we're number one. We're admitting what we're really going after. And that is actualizing what we're seeing in a digital screen. Number two, we're admitting that the screen itself, the very medium that we're going to is insufficient. Because we need we need those extra inputs, even but for the not, most basic But you're not thing. allowing it to be a catalyst for something that could be really cool. I'm sure that Just it could. Just because it's not showing you everything that it can. I'm sure that everything it could. Everything that's there. Yeah, you know, E-Harmony that, used to say they that, were, you know. That's my thing. It's like, just like if you're, you're in the bar, you singled her out because yeah. you thought she was attractive. That's your swipe on, or whatever you do on Tinder. Yeah. You know? So you got to talk to her and you're like, this is, this is adding up. I, I'm, I'm digging this. It's not just, you know, if she's turned around and she just sounded like an, an idiot or, you know, or something like that. Yeah, like voice like, modulation syndrome or something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that real? What is that? Voice modulation syndrome? <laughs> that sounds made up. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Tell me that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I gotta look it up, dude. Hold There's on. our hook right there. <laughs> there it is. Please. Oh, man. Modulation. Voice modulation syndrome. Right here. What is this? Uh. The more you know, dude, I don't know if it's real. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Well, the voice modulation syndrome. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, no. oh, yeah. Okay. It's spasmodic dysphonia. This is a nerve problem that causes the vocal cords to spasm. It can make the vocal sound tight quivery jerky hoarse or groaning at times the voice may sound normal other times isn't that what that uh, is it robert kennedy robert um, kennedy jr i think you think I he know. has spasmodic dys uh, dysphonia i think or something like that but dude it's weird that we're saying this because yeah. we're because we're talking about seeing someone think they're attractive and then finding out when i used to go to um aa all the time and i saw this really hot chick at a meeting one time and uh, she was clearly older than I was. And she kept looking at me during the meeting and smiling. Mm -hmm. And I told my friends, I was like, uh, that's, I'm, I'm going to go on with it that up. chick. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah, exactly. And they're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and long story short, we did um, end up going out for uh, three, four months, something like that. Yeah. Okay. But the, th the re reason why I bring it up is real pretty. And then she, it comes to her turn to talk and she starts talking. Uh, her voice got really shaky, like, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. progressed and it kept getting bad. Um, but she would never, that's not what she sounded like ever. It's just that. And so God bless her for even, because you, when you go to a meeting, NA or AA, you don't have to talk. You just sit there. You never have to talk. Um, but she did, you know, every meeting. So, uh, I thought that was cool that she would because, yeah, when she wasn't talking in front, it was some kind of fear, I guess. And her voice would get really, really shaky and sound really odd. And wow. So it made me think of that. And and so it's it, it kind of matched up with what you were saying. Like, you know, I saw her. She's pretty. And then all of a sudden you hear her talk during a meeting. And it's like, whoa, what what's going on there? You sound like yeah. you're in the back of a truck that has no tires. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> but I, but I only, don't know. Only in front Look, of, you know, like, yeah. Speaking. The, okay. So, I'm trying to think here. What is the success rate of dating online? 
Just over half of Americans, 54%, say the relationships where couples meet through a dating site or app are just as successful as those that begin in person. 38% believe these relations are less successful and 5% deems them more successful. You know what, though? That's not a fair statistic. You want to know why? I'm never going to get divorced. I have never been. My wife and I are both. We've never been more in love. We've never been happier. You guys are like madly in love, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's you just, guys rock. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but that is, we are in the minority. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like that's that's not really a fair statistic because you're you're yeah. talking, you're talking yeah. about people who they're being raised to be like, oh, you're not having fun, quit. Yeah. Jump, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out and go do something that's fun right now. Well, and, and to be quite of, frank, I don't think we can actually even separate the prevalence of people getting, you know, the clap and crap like that from from the mediums that they're using to connect with each other. Like it's not like there's always been people getting, you know, chlamydia and gonorrhea and syphilis and stuff like that's been there for a long time. Herpes. But you you start to say, okay, why is it booming right now? Why is uh, HPV yeah. so huge right now? What what where did that happen? How did mm-hmm. it start to happen? And you go, OK, well, you can go back and see and you can see the increase of this. Um, the virality of this um, connected in the spikes to do with the access to various digitalized mediums that in many ways uh, um, depersonalize situations and settings. People complain about that even on Facebook and stuff like that, where they say, man, it's easy to get into a fight. It's easy to get into arguments. It's easy to talk to somebody in a way that I wouldn't if I was to their face. It's an it's an inevitable effect of the medium itself. The yeah. same same thing's true with dating. And I, I think that we can see the way that relationships are the the not as if it's like all of a sudden it was perfect back then and everybody just met somebody and worked out no 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 saying that the prevalence of of bad <laughs> you know how much bad is part of the pie now compared mm-hmm. to, to historically that it's been part of the pie and you say well in this digitized depersonalized world dehumanized world um it's it's we find rampant rampant and also the idea of the way that relationships the very definition of them has changed but dude um, all of that that i mean dude yeah. that's a whole other discussion because everything you're talking about starts in the home and has everything to do with how people are being raised nowadays look at my friend's son my my uh oldest boys uh friends the stuff that their parents are teaching them or are not teaching them and just this void that they're constantly trying to fill with either sex or drugs, which I've done and I, and you have done. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not something that's new, but I think it's so, there's so much of it. And there's so much more of it with girls than there used to be, I think. Um, I, I don't know why that is. I'm, I, I do know that there's a different uh, a level of, promiscuity uh, i've seen elijah use the tinder app like four years ago mm-hmm. he met a girl and 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 within like two hours they were meeting in the woods they weren't going to meet to have yeah. sex that's not what they did they actually take it real took it really slow but the fact that this they, chick they met in the woods just, huh they went and met in the woods yeah oh you're, you no seriously they didn't <laughs> do anything you, you, but he was looking for magazines or what? Like, I mean, what is he? Oh, <laughs> what's he doing in the woods, Jack? No, they wanted to find a place to meet. Okay, and and, and I was that's just like that. That's my first go to is let's go to the woods. I don't know you. Let's. I want to meet you out in the middle of the woods. Yeah, and I was Where, like, dude? I was like, this chick doesn't know you. She's gonna meet you. Yeah. you know? I mean, they just met. They've been talking for like an hour and a half, yeah. two hours, and they're gonna meet, uh, not in a public place. And I thought, yeah, um, no. it was some like park that's heavily wooded. You know, it wasn't like meet me, you know, yeah. two kilometers south of, you know, it wasn't like that. Yeah. Like, you know, get out, get out of the old compass, you know? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like that. Yeah. But, but I just, <laughs> I, I, I thought, wow, you know, she doesn't even, and she yeah. was a, she had a good head on her shoulder. She was going to be going to college. She had a job. Um, She wasn't like sleeping around all the time, but it's like, you just met this kid. You don't know anything about him. You're going to meet him in a place where there's no one around at all. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen Elijah, you know, talk about the app and stuff. And 
and and his friends and and I don't know if it's because you're we- reaching a wider thing, but a lot of times I think people just use this thing for some kind of booty call. And I'm I'm kind of thankful that it wasn't around when I was growing up. And because between the ages of 16 and 21, um, if I had that app, dude, mm. I mean, I already, you were already boning left and right, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, you were so, spilling your seed like app, Johnny Appleseed everywhere. But if I had the app, yeah, it'd be a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> You're Johnny Appleseeding it up, dude. <laughs> you Whatever were, that means. <laughs> you, sp- spilling your seed all over the oh, earth. Gosh. Spreading your spreading the love, a bunch of Lutskis all over the country. No, nah, yeah, no. I yeah, no. You know, but over ten percent the of people who and this is self reported. Which, I, dude, you have to say in a self-reported way, if, if you say, well, what's the main reason you get on there? And let's say 12, 13 percent says I'm on there because I want the poon. Right. Then you can bank on the idea that it's probably about 20 percent. But so you know you what? Because a lot I of people know. are going to be like, I'm there for a good relationship. And you're like, you're lying, dude. You are there. I, I you know want, that there. You know, no, the like, a lot, like my son, Elijah, he he really wants to. He's had his fair share of fun. He really wants to find a wife mm-hmm. he wants to have kids he's 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 been through the whole party thing you know dug himself out of it dug himself out of a financial hole has a great job a great place he's got a lot to offer so you know ladies if you're uh in your 20s hit hit, hit send us an email yeah let's send us an email yeah, yeah. 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 hook up with my yeah, son that Lutsky love <laughs> yeah let's uh, named it's a good brand He's a, it's a good kid. brand, dude. Yeah, legacy stuff, man. But yeah, he's yeah. so, and, and I know that there are other people on there that who legitimately are like, maybe their friend talked to him into it. Maybe they downloaded it out of desperation. Yeah. And there are people on there who are just like, listen, I don't want, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for one night stand. I'm well, desperately trying to find someone that I'm hoping uh, is compatible with me and wants the same things yeah. I do. I don't want to screw yeah. around. I want to. You know, I want to court and I want to not just date, but try to find a future with someone on here. There are people on there. So yeah. basically, I would use Tinder and I would use my discernment and my my set of skills. Yeah, yeah. And you would not trust yourself and you would not use Tinder. <laughs> I trust myself, dude. I trust myself. I would, but no, I would not. I would not use it. I would in in part of it, you know, I kind of don't need to, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a so I'm a social person. Like I I enjoy going to different institutions and gatherings and networking events. You're right, like you're that. right. It's and maybe I, it's for I'm shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're a shy like guy. Yeah. And so yeah. you're you know, you you're you, we're not in the same world. And so for me, and that has to be admitted. And maybe I should have admitted that up front because there's probably people, you know, pounding the keyboards right now, throwing stuff at the screen saying this guy's a real jerk. But like, given my personality and given my experiences and given what I believe about digital mediums and small groups and inputs and things like that and how we even form ideas of others and what what would be a setup for disaster and stuff all of those things combined, my advice would simply be, no, do not. I would not use it. I would not even encourage others to use it. I would encourage them to maybe consider going back to church. (laughs) I would say you go somewhere, be part of a, I'm serious, be part of a club. And this, what makes it hard in a way is that most people are online and nostalgic folks like me, even with theoretical ideas that I have about mediums and stuff that we are in the, admittedly the minority, but I also look at that and say, that's okay. And that, that it seems to be true of, you know, pretty much all of human history until the young lads that are alive today were born. That's it. Mm -hmm. So if we can trust that we've been around for a minute, most people do want to get married. Most people will. In fact, We've never, we've never lived in a lonelier time than right now where people are frustrated. They, you have, it's so bad. Just the, the basic idea of feeling like you are alone 
and like you are not completely yourself and that you're not being seen or appreciated. And we are feeling that way while being having all this information out there. Whereas before you people still had those feelings. It's not like everybody was like, I'm super appreciated. Everybody sees me, but the prevalence of it is important. And, and the, the sting of it is important. And the sting is particularly stinging now. And so that would be, that's my old man grumpy pants advice, yes, Chad. So I'm is. I'm the old man in a 42 year old man's body, and and that, but that's what I would say. And but no matter what, if my mom is in a relationship, she's married to a guy that she met online. You know, I know some people who've met that way, and they've been together for you know about as, just about as long as me and my wife have been together. So it's not as if it's impossible. I'm just saying I would not advise it. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Uh, get your boobs off my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that yeah. either. I mean, as, as long as I, it's artistic. <clears throat> as, long as, yep. as long as it's genuine art. I mean, I'm kind of into that. But yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying. I am not um, quite that old school. And I think that <laughs> if you're smart, <laughs> yeah, but you got to be smart yeah. and, and know what you're looking for. And just like if meeting some chick in a bar, which is not where I've ever thought I'd meet my wife, mm -hmm. but pretty normal though. But see, Chad, I don't actually have to worry about any of this, anything to do at all with, oh, should I get online or whatnot? Because, you know, I'm all into arranged marriages anyway. I am friends with many butchers and bankers, and it's already settled, dude. <laughs> it's already done. Just in case, man, it's all, you know. So it's a gentleman's agreement. We've all shaken hands. It's how my daughter's going to get married when she's 40. So I've already, it's already set, dude. It's already worked out. We've, we've done the Lachaim thing, dude, in the air with our, with our liqueur. Yeah, dude, we were, we were mm -hmm. cheersing with our Manischewitz, dude. And uh, so, but yeah, so I don't have to worry about it. I'll leave that to the whippersnappers, Jen. Yeah. Send your hate mail to paleo cheese, <laughs> gmail.com. Yeah, yeah. With any request for the chastity belt <laughs> <laughs> on sale. That being said, yeah, I have one thing I want to share real quick. Yeah, that I did share in a small video. But if people are interested, I have now. Skullface Boy is in a beautiful oh! um, hardcover. Ah, oh. and so is my collection, Spicy Constellation, and other recipes. Oh. Uh, it has an alternate cover instead of the meat TV. It has meat uh, glasses um, on this chick. And Dude, kind of cool bro. But yeah, these are like, I think, $16.99, $17.99, something like that. But Do you love that, Jack? Yeah. It's not dust that jacket, you? which yeah, is yeah. fine with me. I, yeah. I, I like it. But um, so if you have not read Skullface Boy or Spicy Constellation or any of my books, Go grab one, man. I'm, I'm doing some shameless uh, plug. You have to, man. Shameless promotion. Yeah, you, dude, you've got to, man. And, and I mean, come on, man. Your stuff's in a hardcover now. So, I mean, dude, that's like major time pride. And so the idea is like, no, Chad, don't talk about your new hardcover book on the show. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. <laughs> yeah, dude, talk about that, man. Because that's I'm pumped about it. Dude, it looks awesome. It looks totally dope. It is. It's it's very nice, and I and I do have a uh, a book coming out, but it won't be. You'll we'll probably have three or four more episodes before uh, it's it comes out, but that yeah. will be out next next month. You're called man, Slow man. Burn on Riverside. So yeah, we're getting ready to watch Sleepaway Camp. You're gonna want to come back to part two, and even if you have to fast forward to the end of the video, um, watch see it. us talking about it. And watch Jeremiah's reaction. I'll we'll have some some clips on there, but yeah. one clip in particular that um, will definitely be on there. So come back and I'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> I shall learn. All right. Until then. Yeah.